Dear students, I cordially invite you all to this class, class 12, chapter 6, Holy Bible, the written word of God. Let us begin this class with a short prayer. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for your ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit and guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the Word of God. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most of us seek guidance, inspiration, and direction from Holy Bible. I found an interesting acronym, Bible. Basic instruction before leaving earth. Yes, it is very true. Bible gives us a direction to lead a holy life. Christian education is Bible-based, Holy Spirit in empowered and Christ-centered teaching learning process. Now let us look at the objectives of this class. The general objective is at the end of the class, students understand the concept of Bible, appreciates its importance in deriving guidance, direction, and practice this in their daily life through Bible reading. And very specific objective is to explain divine revelation, describe the phases of divine revelation, explain the canonical nature of Bible, and the different translations of Bible. Now let us look at the history of divine revelation. Divine revelation means a process of God revealing himself to man. It is the revelation of the word of God. Jesus, the word incarnate, incarnate means embodied in the human form, is the definitive and perfect revelation of God. Now let's look at the phases of divine revelation, which is explained under four phases. Divine revelation through creation, revelation through messengers, Jesus, the definitive revelation of God, divine revelation and the church. So the first is divine revelation through creation. The creation is very well explained in the book of Genesis. The whole of the created world from the creation of light on the first day to the creation of man on the sixth day reveals God in a preliminary manner. The scriptural verse that man was created in God's own image and likeness confirms the fact that creation is God's own self-revelation. The second phase is revelation through messengers. God revealed to the chosen people of Israel, whom he called to be witness before the whole creation through some chosen people. Example, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, etc. The Old Testament gives the synopsis of such messages and revelation. These messages were introduced with the words, the Lord says. They use this introductory statement to convince people that the messages were not their own but of God. And the third phase, Jesus, the definitive revelation of God. The word of God in its fullness is visible to us 
in Jesus the incarnate. In the beginning was word and the word was with God and the word was God. John chapter 1 verse 1. This gospel verse witnesses the fact that Jesus and the word of God is one and the same. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. John chapter 1 verse 18. Hence, we believe that the mystery of God which Jesus revealed is the perfect revelation of God. And the fourth phase is divine revelation and the church. Jesus had chosen and appointed 12 apostles to bear witness to the divine revelation and proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The church built on the foundation of the apostles is the body of Christ and the church is the continuation on it on earth. Church is the custodian, proclaimer, interpreter of the divine revelation. It is the church who gives us the 73 books of the Holy Bible as revealed scriptures. Now let's see the Bible, word of God in the written form. Bible contains a series of 73 divinely inspired books starting from Genesis to Revelation. We find an etymology Etymology means the meaning and origin of the word. So the etymology is from a Greek word, Biblia, which means holy book. The Old Testament, except three books, are written in Hebrew. The three books are of Book of Wisdom, 1st and 2nd Maccabees. All the New Testament are written in Greek and the Gospel of St. Matthew was written in Aramaic. When the Bible was made, it was not divided into verses and chapters. It was Cardinal Stephen Langton, the Archbishop of England, divided the, the books in Bible into chapters in AD 1205. Further, Robert Stephen, a missionary, divided them into verses in A.D. 1555. The whole Bible contains 1334 chapters and 35 527 verses. Let's learn about the canonical nature of Bible. Canon is a Greek word used by the carpenters to refer to their measuring rod. Alexandrian Bishop Tarsius used this term to, to the divinely inspired books in the Holy Bible in 367 AD. The Word of God is the measuring rod of Christian life, which is explained in Galatians as well as in Philippians 3.16. St. Jerome clearly stated that there are 46 plus 27 that makes up 73 canonical books in Bible. We'll see the translations of Bible. The Greek translation of Bible is known as Septuagint. Saint Jerome, known as the father of biblical studies, translated the whole Bible into Latin, which is known as Vulgate. The Syriac translation is called as Peshitta Bible. Now let's see the Holy Bible, the book inspired by God. The way God helped the writers of the Bible in their writing is termed divine inspiration, which has got four meanings. The writers received clear inspiration from the Holy Spirit while writing the Bible. Since the human authors wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They included in the Bible only what God wanted. 
the Bible will not make mistake in the teaching related to divine subjects. The style, language and theological views of the human authors will be reflected in their writings. Now students, I like to give you some salient quotations of Bible which is given by renowned personalities. The Bible is the cradle where Christ was laid, Martin Luther. I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man, Abraham Lincoln. Within the covers of the Bible are the answers for all problems of man face, Ronald Reagan. God speaks to us through his word, by his Holy Spirit, by T.B. Joshua. So students, during this class, we have learned the history of divine revelation, phases of divine revelation, Bible, the word of God in the written form, canonical nature of Bible, various translations of Bible, and Bible, the book inspired by God. Let us listen to Pope Francis' instructions on Bible reading to Christians all over the world. Dear families, listen to the word of God, meditate it together, pray with it, let the Lord fill your lives with mercy. Everyone should find at least few minutes every day to read the Word of God. A Bible for every family, not to place it on a shelf, but to read it often, every day, both individually and together, husband and wife, parents and children. This way, the family grows walks with the light and power of the Word of God. Be constantly nourished by the Word of God. Christians should comprehend the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ through the diligent reading of the Word of God. For the sacred text is the nourishment of the soul and the pure and perennial source of spiritual life or in all of us. In order that the family walk well with trust and hope, it must be nourished with the word of God. So let's have an activity from this session. So you can select any five verses from Bible which proclaim the supremacy of God's words. For example, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So similar verses, you can select any five and write and submit to your teacher. I hope this class was clear to you all. Before we conclude, let us thank God Almighty for helping us to understand this class. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit,